Four. This is one more. Hello and welcome to Otra Por Favor. Otra Por Favor. Episodio, uh, por favor. episodio número 42. 42, what? I know, he's already thinking about his retirement plan. <laughs> and, you know, thinking about buying another property. It's too late. <laughs> it's too late, right? Yeah, you're behind. <laughs> <laughs> you're screwed. Yeah, yeah, it's a chingo. <laughs> um, uh, my name is Richie, and here we have... Coque Martinez. Here's David, ya te sabe. And as you guys know, the Otra Por Favor podcast, uh, we like to talk about football, vida, and cultura. Um, today we're going to you know, do a little more, more uh, just a rundown of, of, we already know that the qualifiers are almost done. Yeah. Uh, the groups have already been defined. There's a couple of spots that still need to be played in, prom like in promotion. Um, but overall, we already know like what's going to happen. Another thing we're also just going to talk about is a little more of... Um, Who's who more so is like who missed out besides who made it and what was CONCACAF's um what do you guys think of CONCACAF and, and especially you know like the USA, Canada, Mexico and Costa Rica is gonna play the promotion game. What what are your thoughts on that? And 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 uh we're also gonna have a a special announcement after before we were done. So um Let's get to let's get to the the Concacaf part first. Yeah. So the group, it, it was a it was no octagonal. How do you say it in English? Octagonal. Octagonal. There we go. And actually, I almost said octagon. <laughs> 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 and and uh, the 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 group ended with Canada first place, Mexico second, USA third, uh, Costa Rica fourth. The first three are going to the World Cup, and the fourth one has to play a game against who's going to be the New, New Zealand. New, New Zealand. Zealand. Yeah, they're playing New Zealand. Okay, that's going to be a good one, uh, yeah, yeah. especially with playing New Zealand. And and I know like when Mexico played in in New Zealand in 2013, it was actually pretty fun because the game was like one in the morning, so we we're at, still at the bar. <laughs> so. Good luck to the Ticos. Good luck to the Ticos. Always pulling for the Ticos, man. Pura vida. Pura yeah, vida. man. I pull for, no matter what, like, for me, is, I pull for my region before any any region. Uh, if the U.S. is playing against Spain, I'm going to pull for the U.S. You know, if Mexico's playing the U.S., I'm pulling for both. Uh, <laughs> and uh, what do you guys think of, of, you know, let's start with Canada, the first place. They, they did, I would say, it wasn't surprising because they have a lot of good players, but the question is, are they going to be able to sustain that uh, high level of competition once we get to the World Cup and beyond that in, in the future World Cups? Yeah, um, I mean, I, I got to say, like, for me, it was a, a surprise mm -hmm. for them to, for, for, to see Canada in that level of playing. Um, yeah, we, we saw that they have, like, uh, really talented players. Uh, mm -hmm. playing in Europe, um, some of them. And uh, I just feel like the the whole country and like the, the whole organization that the that the team has been making throughout all these games, all these all the all these tests, um, I feel like um they have improved so much, especially mm -hmm. playing together. Um you can see them as a whole team. They have a lot of individual players that can like dribble and, and take on one on one on players. But I feel like uh, Canada is playing as a whole team, and and that's kind of like why they're 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 in fir first place right now. I think, mm -hmm. in in the in the qualifiers. Yeah, the Concacaf has been really Concacafi, um, <laughs> as in, to me, the Concacaf is always full of surprises, mm -hmm. and uh, this one in particular has been Canada. Canada has been the biggest surprise for me as well. Mm -hmm. Similar to David, I didn't expect to see um, a national team. Uh, th that showed superiority like Canada on the field. They're a team that's very vertical, a team that is very physical, that can punish you on the counterattack. That is that the, the their people, uh, the people of Canada, have rooted for and supported and really jumped behind 
And you see that you look back at some of the games, uh, I think back to the game they played against Mexico and the game they played against USA. Stadiums were filled with fans just mm -hmm. just bursting with energy at every every counterattack, every opportunity they had. And they came out with some big, big results. Um, and props to them. They have a they have a good system. And I think that looking jumping a little bit ahead, I know we're gonna get down to it, but they they have a good chance at um at making it past the group stage. It'll be hard because mm -hmm. they got Belgium and Croatia, mm -hmm. not to minimize Morocco. Right. But I think out of the CONCACAF teams, from what I've seen, Canada's Canada's the, the one with the with the tools and player and system to give the surprise in that group. Mm -hmm. Like you were saying too, Richie, um, that we don't know if they're going to keep the same level you know, throughout the, the World Cup. I mm -hmm. feel like they're, they're still going to play the same way. Yeah. Uh, the problem is that they're gonna play harder teams. Yeah. So that's True. that's 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 where we're gonna see that to see if whatever they were doing against Concacaf is it's it's enough to mm -hmm. to push them to to a whole different level. You know, one thing that they have is they have players that do play in high level competition. So they're they should be ready. There there should their their mentality is because I already know I'm in this I've been in these situations before. I mean, Alfonso Davis. He, he just won came a Champions for a game League. Today yeah, against Villarreal. He, he didn't do well. Uh, he did decent, but his team didn't do well. He's, mm. he's coming back from injury. Two yeah. yeah. different. Um, but I mean, he's a he's a beast, badass player. Right. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. And, and man, it's just for me, as like when when I look at Canada, it's it's a, a team that I would say reflects the future of soccer, vertical and physical. Um, y no te va a chance hacer pases. If you look at how they were pressuring Mexico, I mean, or even the U.S., they didn't let them come out of their, their area. Mm -hmm. So if if they can capitalize on that aspect for themselves, I think they're going to have a good chance against Croatia and against Belgium. Belgium. Um, Belgium is a team that's, you know, we can talk about that later too. But I, I think um, I, I would say it's all on, on also the resources they, you know, they have for the players too yeah. going yeah. forward. Because I, I really hope that they maintain this level because it's good for our region. It's good for our region. It's good for it's good for Mexico and it's good for USA because good competition mm -hmm. is going to make you perform better under pressure and in big situations like the tournament we're about to have, uh, the World Cup. Um, going back to um, the CONCACAF qualifiers, man, um, really just switching over to Mexico, it was a little bit of a, of a letdown. Um, even though the points, Mexico finished second place, right? Mm -hmm. So it seems like they did okay. But it, the feeling that they give me going into the World Cup is not a good one. Yeah, It's one that um, that I'm going to root for them and support them with all my heart. But thinking about it, like, logically, I don't think – I'm not sure if they can – if they can do – if they're going to perform well. Um, and USA – at the same time, f moments showed excitement and and uh, this best this this new generation of players that are playing at really mm -hmm. elite teams in Europe. Uh, you got Giorena, uh, Christian Pulisic, um, you know players that are that, that are that are in high levels of competition, but mm -hmm. they didn't get the results when it mattered, and it's reflected at, on the t on the table and in the place they qualified. So, I would say. Mexico and USA, if I root for both of them, and I, I'm not satisfied. I think, I think it's kind of a, a, a mediocre performance from them in the in the qualifiers. Mm -hmm. And looking at the social media, a lot of backers of both sides being really negative towards each other, mm -hmm. just talking a bunch of shit. Mm -hmm. For me, it's just like you're talking shit just to stir the pot. But yeah, you if you really look in the mirror, you're not that much better, that much worse. It's the teams are nivelados, in my opinion. There's they just want the hot takes and, and the likes and yeah. Twitter. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, I, I think Mexico Mexico's level, it's not reflect like they're they're what they can do doesn't reflect their commitment right now. And they have no commitment whatsoever. Uh maybe there's a very like not all players, I would say, you know, there's four or five players that I think, you know, that have a commitment to improve. But the rest of the players are just not into um, growing as a soccer player, you know, playing that high level 
you know, and and that's unfortunate because we've talked about it in the past. They're gonna make for me as Mexico is gonna make it to the qualifier, like to the next round. I I think they they know how to play that group stage well, but it all comes down to how how do they feel once they get to the to the next round. And the US is is a team that has has it all. You know, they had it all they have everything to to succeed. They're they're like all three teams, Mexico, Canada and, and U.S. are not going to play a qualifier next next um, next round of of you know Qualified. like before the World Cup, mm-hmm. so that that takes away competition. That takes away you know um, mm-hmm. staying in shape for those players. You know for for the World Cup because now they're going to have to find friendly games. Mm-hmm. But the one thing that I, that I'm I'm still concerned is it's it's um what's there's growth in, in America, like as soccer, but is is it enough for the U.S. team to, you know, does the individual growth of a player reflect the U.S. team as a team, like in, as an organization? I think that's my my question. And how can they, whenever it comes to those defining moments, such as a qualifier, in are they gonna be able to get those results? Because they if they couldn't get it in Coca-Cola. You know what makes us think they're gonna. Both teams are gonna go beyond what they usually do in in the World Cup. I yeah. mean that's that's a good question. I mean I feel like it has to do with their their country. I mean when you're playing uh, such a big tournament like the World Cup, right? Um, there's obviously um, a lot of uh, a lot of thoughts into it, like. ¿Qué vamos a hacer? ¿Hasta dónde vamos a llegar? ¿Cuál es nuestro propósito? Uh-huh. Sabemos que hay equipos muchos mejores, con mucho mejor talento, con mucho mejor este, uh, historia que nosotros uh-huh. en, el, en, el, en el fútbol. Uh-huh. ¿Qué tenemos que hacer? Y yo creo que el, el planteamiento de, de Estados Unidos, para mí, por lo que he visto, es, quiere, quiere que estos jugadores jóvenes agarren un poquito de eso, un poquito de, de sabor que se siente llegar a a una a una copa del mundo a, a hacer un poquito de historia y, y ya lo lo que viene de más es extra uh-huh. como lo estoy viendo yo de Estados Unidos porque lo demostró en, en la Concacaf como el último partido que tuvieron que jugar uh-huh. contra Costa Rica yo creo que re, re, jugaron relajados ya sabían que estaban clasificados ya sabían que no tenían que hacer mucho esfuerzo para poder estar en la Copa Mundial porque ya estaban entonces le dieron la oportunidad a, a, a Costa Rica, por ejemplo, de, de meterse, uh-huh. aunque sea jugar un partido eso para ver si tienen con qué llegar al, al Mundial. Uh, en el caso de México, por ejemplo, lo que yo pienso es que uh, ha tenido una, una mala racha simplemente porque ha habido muchas este, lesiones de jugadores que son, que son key, jugadores que necesita el equipo que, que jueguen, uh-huh. uh, como es el Chucky Lozano, Uh, como es este uh, uh, cuál es el otro que estaba lesionado uh, Raúl, 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 Raúl sí. o sea, son son jugadores uh, claves para que este equipo funcione sin esos jugadores el equipo va a sufrir lo cual que, que lo hicieron lo pudimos ver en, un, en unos partidos donde le faltó un poquito uh-huh. más de, de control un poquito más de mentalidad um, pero yo yo entiendo que por qué se sienten que, que se mira como que México no va a tener mucho para, para lo que viene en la Copa del Mundo. Yo sinceramente yo creo que hay que estar confiados porque México, como quiera, va a ser México. Tiene jugadores, uh-huh. tiene mucho talento. Uh, tiene un buen coach. Por, uh, por lo que yo pienso, tiene un, un buen coach que le puede dar el salto extra que necesita también México uh-huh. en, en, el, en la Copa del Mundo. Uh, en los números, los números han dicho que en realidad México es un buen trabajo, se quedó un segundo, o sea, uh-huh. 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 arriba de... Y empató de, con, con Canadá por a, puntos. Arriba de Estados Unidos, imagínate, o sea, uh-huh. el número se mira muy bien. Yo creo los que resultados. Los resultados. Los resultados de Tata han sí, sido los mejores claro. de, de y, ciclos y ten, anteriores. Y tenemos que, yo, yo bueno, yo como, como fanático del fútbol tenemos que también, porque importan mucho los, los números en el uh-huh. fútbol, uh-huh. y entonces tenemos que confiar y, 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 y al final de cuentas, estaba hablando el otro día con, con, con un amigo, ¿no? Y, y decimos, es que el, es la Copa Mundial. Sí, la Copa Mundial no es cualquier este, torneo que te, 
que, que, que te echas este, así con tu, con tu equipo. O sea, es, un, es algo nuevo completamente y, y sale, sale talento por, por las ganas, por, por, por querer ir más allá, por, por representar a tu país. O sea, es, es algo que, que, que te hace ser mejor. O sea, que al final de cuentas no importa cómo hayas hecho en los partidos, cómo llegaste uh -huh. ahí, importa que estás ahí y a pelear. ¿me entiendes? O sea, okay. es una Copa del Mundo y yo creo que México eso esos tiene que tener en la mente. Uh -huh. Sí, gran misión cumplida que, sí. que calificaron. Uh -huh. Mission accomplished. Sí. They're, they're, they're in the World Cup because we look around at the, at the, uh, at the landscape of, of world football and there's very, very important players, teams that are missing. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's something that we wanted to get into in a little bit. Right. And and um, now, now what are you guys, uh, now we're going to talk about uh, Costa Rica against New Zealand. Are they going to get that result in New Zealand? Oh, hell yeah, man. The Ticos, uh, they, think, they have a good team. Yeah. They, they have a good team, and they managed to beat USA mm -hmm. in that last game, I think, with their B squad. It wasn't even mm -hmm. their, their titulares. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I think the Costa Rican People, the, the Costa Rican teams, they've always been teams that have fought really hard in recent years. You look at last World Cup, um, when was it? Uh, 2014, mm -hmm. when they made that deep run. Mm -hmm. um, I think they made it to quarterfinals, quarterfinals mm -hmm. which was unheard of. Um, so I think that they can go and, and beat New Zealand and hopefully qualify. Yeah, I, th I think I think so too. Um, I want, I mean, I want our region to have more spots available. Um, and I, th I think... Costa Rica, if, if, you know, I wish they can pull another 2014 performance. Yeah. I mean, all of, I think all of our, I wish all of our, the, the teams from our region can do that. So they can kind of set a statement that they're not the worst region around, you know. And it, it, I feel like we're getting there, you know, it's a process. Mm -hmm. uh, like you said, Canada, we, when did we ever thought that they were going to be first, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, and we can see that uh, our, Football is growing, and, and, and there's a lot of more players going to Europe, going to these competitive leagues that is basically helping the whole region, like you said. Um, Costa Rica, I feel like they're going to they're gonna take New Zealand. They're going to win mm -hmm. against them. And um, yo creo que van a tener una, un, una, una, bueno, primero es el, el partido. Tienen que ganarlo para mm -hmm. pasar. Pero si pasan, yo creo que van a tener, van a dar una sorpresa también en este uh -huh. Costa Rica. Tiene, tiene jugadores uh, muy talentosos que juegan, un, uno, unos juegan en la, en la Liga Mexicana. Uh -huh. uh, muy buenos, mucho talento, mucho drive, mucho mucha mentalidad, lo cual a veces necesita mucho en el equipo. Y yo creo que Costa Rica, si pasa, si le gana a New Zealand y llega a llegar, va a dar, va a dar una, una excelente... Este, Performance. Uh -huh. yeah. Y ahora vamos a los que no van a ir. Uh, Chile, Italia, um, Sweden, who else? Egypt, Nigeria, Nigeria, Russia, I mean, because yeah. of the obvious reasons, mm -hmm. and Colombia. Colombia, dude. Like big, big Ooh. countries right now. That's at least, you yeah. know, a, another group, a very good group that we can put it yeah. uh, by itself. Italy is in. Italy and Chile's second time not going. Uh, that's it. For me, the biggest surprise is Italy. Porque they came from winning the Euros. Yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah. They came from huge uh, recent success to failing to qualify, to losing to North Macedonia. Mm -hmm. You know? I I didn't even know. I hadn't, I'd never even seen North Macedonia play. Um, but they managed to pull a... A big, big result against Italy in the final minute. Morlaso, mm -hmm. like, shot from outside the box. That um, that Donnarumma, I'm sure he's he's going to think about that for the rest of his life, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, we know that, that Fútbol de Revanchas, you know, you can get, your, you can get your, um, your comeback one day. But Italy, once again, misses a, a World Cup, the biggest stage in football. Um, and I think the Italian people... Are, are gonna be are super hurt and it's gonna be weird same thing goes for colombia mm -hmm. i don't know about you guys but watching colombia in the world cup for the past uh several cycles mm -hmm. 
was one of my greatest joys. Like the biggest, my favorite one was with with James when he yeah. had that amazing, amazing World Cup that kind of catapulted kind of his career. 2014. He scored yeah. some golazos. Uh, probably best, best, some of the best goals of World Cups ever. Mm-hmm. Um, and just like, como juega and like, they play for each other and uh, the way they, como celebran los goles. Mm-hmm. Like, same thing with Nigeria. Like, you know, they, they, these are teams made up of talented individuals, but that really love each other and play for each mm-hmm. other that we're not going to get to see. But um, it gives other it gives other countries opportunity to do their thing too. So um, I know that the next World Cup there's going to be more teams, mm-hmm. so it's going to be more inclusion. But uh, I mean, hopefully, what more, do you, more, go, more more teams can get in, right? Yeah. yeah, Where, yeah. What do, how do you guys feel about Man, the ones you're missing? I would like I was talking to Gozi about um, Nigeria, and shout out Gozi. Gozi is our, our friend from Nigeria, and he's our Nigerian kid. yeah, he he was telling me that <laughs> that. Everyone, in, I mean, in Nigeria, like, it's like here, like, in you know, in our countries, even here now, it's getting there where people are so passionate. And sometimes that's the one thing that helps you, like, distract yourself from anything else in reality. Right. And he was just saying how um, there's the, 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 the team switched coaches um, and that, that ended up not working out well. So that pretty much had a long-term effect when it came to the World Cup. And another thing that he was saying is, you know, just a lot of people, they were just heartbroken. Even his sister that doesn't really watch football or, you know, soccer, she was, like, sad about that. Damn. So imagine, like, yep. them here, imagine the country over there already. Right. Uh, and same for Italy, second World Cup in a row, along with Chile. Chile uh, I, I know Chile's probably going through a generational, like, um, they're renewing, reset, re- reset re- restructure. Yeah. So from from that, it's it's kind of like sad because they have pretty good players, Montesinos. Um, I mean, some players like Alexis. Uh, Sanchez. Sanchez is it's already, you know, like an, an outbound part. Otro Vidal, also Otro kind Vidal, of yeah. twilight of his career. Yeah. Right, right. So um, they, I mean, they have the, the players, but it's just, I mean, the, the Comebol could also be a very tough. The Comebol is probably one of the, the hardest, the hardest, the hardest, hardest qualifiers. Uh, qualifiers in the world. And, and <laughs> the reason why is because everybody plays against everybody. Mm-hmm. Like you have to play everybody. Like it's not like in Europe or Asia or Africa or even in Kumaka where you play the the group over there is todos contra todos. Mm-hmm. So, and and that's why it's so passionate. You know, um, I, I feel for our friend Chile that. You know, we, we have several Chilean friends that are not going to, you know, that. Yeah. Unfortunate. It, it, it's, it's crazy because, like, Reinaldo Rueda es, es el coach ahorita de Colombia. Yeah. Pero fue de Chile. Uh-huh. Lo corrieron porque el Chile no estaba haciendo bien en, la, en, <laughs> en las qualifiers. Uh-huh. Colombia lo agarró. Y, básicamente, este, este entrenador dejó a dos selecciones <laughs> sin mundial. Uf. Imagine that in the resume. <laughs> Imagínate. He's o sea, an undercover es, agent for uh, the other team. Es como tú estabas diciendo lo de, lo de Nigeria, ¿no? Dices, agarra el nuevo, nuevo entrenador porque el, el que estaba no está funcionando, ¿no? Y, y cuando haces un cambio de esa magnitud eh, eh, en mediación de, 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 de estas cualificaciones sí. para entrar al Mundial, es, es muy difícil que un, que un equipo se, se acople junto ¿no? y que entienda lo que de verdad el, el entrenador quiere enseñarles, ¿no? Yeah. Y, y lo que yo me puedo pensar... Viendo que Chile está haciendo mal con este entrenador, ¿por qué Colombia hace? ¿Por qué Colombia agarra a este entrenador porque piensa que los va a hacer subir a ellos? O sea, no, no, no comprendo, yo no entiendo. ¿Se hubieran llevado al Piojo? <laughs> <laughs> hey, yeah. Piojo could be a good, a good coach for Chile. That's another thing I wanted to talk about. Um, you know, with, with the results that Mexico was doing, not so great, kind of okay, kind of yeah. mediocre. There was a lot of uh, rumors circulating. Uh, Hugo, Hugo Sanchez was saying that he wanted a coach. I mean, for the 20th time, was saying <laughs> he wants a coach Hugo, no te quieren, we, yeah. and then, uh, uh, you know, uh, este, el Piojo, el Piojo Herrera was, uh, you know, throwing his name in the hat too. And, um, then with Tata Martino having his own health issues, it kind of put it in question. Yeah. But for me, I was like, this is the worst time to switch coaches. To switch coaches. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You need to play this out. You qualified, you're on the border of qualifying at the time. Now you qualified. Mm-hmm. You need to have the coach. If, if he's healthy, if he can yeah. coach, you need to have yeah. him. Yep. If he's not healthy, that's another issue. And hopefully, you know, I'm praying that that, that does health as well. Right. Because, you know, for him as a person, but also for Mexico, because 
to switch a coach at this point is would be disastrous. Um, even though Piojo would, would be able to come in with a familiarity with players and true. the system, and yeah, true that. He, uh, he's coached uh, World Cups, but mm -hmm. still, man, David, yeah, I, I, I know what you're saying. That <laughs> it's crazy to, to make that switch to someone who had, is a proven failure, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, and yeah. and it, like you say, like that, uh, adding to that, it's just why do we always have that same cycle every every qualifier? What happened with Osorio? I mean, and Osorio actually did end up, ended up doing pretty, pretty good. good. Hey, we should switch him out. And then right now, hey, let's switch him out because of health reasons. Like, why is Mexico always? ¿Por qué levanta la mano en el momento menos indicado? But whenever it's time for los trancazos. Nadie. Nadie, nadie quiere. And, and it, it sucks. Uh, I don't like that. Uh, and I think that, that shows a lot of, you know, like, a lot of things that we, you know, they need to change. And that's part of the mentality too, you know, because that affects the current coaches. I mean, at the end of the day, we can all say, "Oh, you have to be professional," but yeah, but he's a human being. Like for for someone to wish you to not get better physically, for you to be replaced, like replace you in your job, like that shows the character of some people. I mean, and then that's like, viejo, no mames. Another thing of who's missing from the tournament: two players I want to bring up. Carlos Vela, Chicharito Hernandez, mm -hmm. thoughts? I think you have to take Carlos Vela won't go. Carlos right. Vela's already in that. I'm not going to go even if you call me. But Chicharito, I, I think whenever you're competing in a World Cup, you're competing as, as a nation, you got to take the players that are available and they're, you know, because the thing is Chicharito's on fire. Uh, and he, ese la mete como caiga. Mm -hmm. So, I think him being in the in the, in the, in the squad, he he it's not that he deserves it. It's like he's you know he keeps scoring another you know ten goals from here till whenever they make the final list. I'm I'm telling you, I think he's gonna make it. I, I'm telling you right now, like yeah. so he's gonna, gonna, gonna call, call him. Yeah, he's gonna call it. Well, everything that I read about about Chicharito's case is that you know. They got into this uh, controversy with a, with a fiesta and like something. Just always, there's always some bullshit. With, there is always a there's fiesta. always some bullshit with uh, yeah. with Mexico and I guess sometimes with the USA, but particularly with Me Mexico with making yeah. fiestas and torneos when they're not playing well and everyone gets in trouble yeah. and like no one takes responsibility and then they end up blaming the youngest, stupidest guy there <laughs> and all the old guys with wives end up you know just saying oh it wasn't me. Uh, so. <laughs> That's a huge problem. Dude. It's a huge disciplinary problem. So, <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so, uh, it, <laughs> so you know, uh, you know, Oribe Peralta. Um, whenever they they played that, they there was a one, there was a, this one time. I think it was they played in Monterrey and they all got in trouble. And Oribe Peralta was supposed to go to that you know that game and it's supposed to be called, but he got injured. So they asked him in El Frasco, like, hey. He's like, man, I'm glad I didn't I didn't go to that. He's like, my wife said, I'm glad you didn't you didn't get called and you got injured that time because he would have been in the same mix. Because it's like his Carlos homies. Vela, he's, he's all his homies got in yeah. trouble. Carlos Vela, Salcido. So, I mean, it's just always some bullshit, you know? Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But f from what I understand is Chicha Chicharito's case, he, he never, uh, I don't know, Pido disculpas, and he's you know it's like this the same typical thing that happens to a lot of a lot of you know men. You get into an issue, and then you don't want to say you're sorry, and the other person doesn't want to say they're sorry, so you end up never talking again. Yeah, it's the ego, right? It's the ego, <laughs> the pride, the male, yeah. the the male ego is very strong, and, and yeah. in this case, it can hurt a team. You know, you yeah. see Chicharito playing his playing playing his ass off, scoring goals, and you know for that issue, he's not going to probably maybe not. Gonna go to the World Cup. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I'm telling you guys right now here. Um, I think he's You're gonna get it? called. Yeah. He's, okay. He's gonna get called. What about uh, one more, Marcelo, Flores? You have to take him. I mean, think so. Y'all want to take everybody? <laughs> you, nah, you have I to. I don't think he's gonna go. Though. I don't yeah, but if you look at it, I mean, in Mexico, there's not another player that is better than him. So it will really, it's it's just another filler spot. Like he's not gonna be playing starting, well, nor like the the 
I the think, bench player. I think the danger was that if Mexico didn't take him, maybe Canada would. Is that is that kind of the issue? The pressure behind it? Right. right. Um I mean, he's he's already played several. Uh, he even told me at the stadium, nah. I didn't uh, see him, but he didn't say shit to me. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, I think I think he he's committed to Mexico. I mean, he's already played several games for them, so um, he 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 understands that part, and I think he he already knows like it's he has more chance of you know having high level competition with Mexico and even getting called because if Canada keeps growing, I mean, is there gonna be room for him in Canada? I mean, those are good questions, but we don't know the answers. I mean, it's, yeah. Yeah. time will tell, you know. Time will tell. Uh, yeah. Right. Only um, time will tell if you made a good or bad decision. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, I mean, if he if he, he if he's, up, like, fit and he, he's, you know, healthy and everything, I would take him. Uh, just as La Volpe took Guardado. Mm -hmm. And Guardado ended up, you know, being very consistent with Mexico for so long, ever since 2006, just because of that one call. Yeah, yeah but but Tata is not La Volpe, dude. Tata doesn't doesn't look for young players to like give them the opportunity. Mm -hmm. he he wants, he's a different. Yeah, he's a different. Yeah, different it's a different philosophy. He, yeah. yeah, he prefers. Uh, La Volpe likes young young players. young players, and he pushed them. He likes to, those coachable players. Yeah, that's yeah. that's a good point, David. Yeah. Well, we want to wrap up this missing segment and go into the World Cup draw. Woo. Yeah, let's do it. Um, All right. Who wants to start with the first group? Group A, Qatar, Netherlands, Senegal, and Ecuador. Ooh, that's a tough one. You got the host nation. Uh, you have, you have Ecuador. The orange machine. Ooh. You have the African champions, La Senegal, La Mane, La Mane, Mane. Mm -hmm. and Ecuador. The sorpresa de la mm -hmm. Right now in their uh, golden generation of players. Hell yeah, yeah. Yep. So I, I'll just say, like, one of the stories that I've been following is with a uh, coach in the Netherlands, uh, mm -hmm. Bangal. Bangal. He's going through cancer. Luis Bangal. Yeah, Louis Bangal, he's go he has cancer right now. And um, you can tell when someone's going through a struggle like that, that when they speak in public, they, they don't, they don't, they speak with zero care. They say exactly what they're thinking of because they know that. Death, lleva, is, death is on the door and like you know you just have a different you speak with your heart and mm -hmm. some of the comments he's made is is against qatar um he's like why are, it's so stupid that we're having a world cup here it makes no sense it's mm -hmm. just, it, it's stupid like those are his words mm -hmm. and little ha, ha, this is like the luck of the draw he's literally going to play qatar so <laughs> i'm super excited to see the press conferences more like not as much as a game but also i'll be like all right i need to see what this guy's going to say yeah and um, I don't know Qatar. No words. I got no words for them. We'll talk. We'll get to them later. In Senegal. I hope to see Mane kill it. And uh, that guy's been winning everything. They they will. <laughs> they will kill it. He's been winning everything. Yeah. It's a tough group for 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 Ecuador. Mm -hmm. I'd say. Yeah. I think Parajito. it's it's yeah. pretty even. Yeah. So, yeah, it's pretty even. So who's gonna go first, second? And who's gonna stay out? I think first. I'm just gonna go like Netherlands. I think they'll go first. Yeah. Senegal or Ecuador can can be second, second but sure. I think wh when they play each other, whoever wins is going to be second. Mm -hmm. Pero comprometete. Who's going to be second? Well, I'm going to I'm going to just support Ecuador. I'm going to say Ecuador. They're going to go second. Yeah. Latino gang, let's go. I, I think I think for me Ecuador because of the golden generation. I mean, if you can make it from the con con Conmebol qualifier, mm -hmm. you know how to play those you're, tough games you're a warrior yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah they're ready for that for sure um so i think in uh, netherlands ecuador senegal and qatar really qatar's out i'm gonna i'm gonna go a different route uh senegal ecuador um netherlands and uh qatar, qatar. oh first shit. second third fourth yeah oh okay. shit so I, you think netherlands is gonna get cut i think so oh dude. damn that'd be a good surprise mm -hmm. um well, that'd be a surprise. But usually, I like to see Netherlands in big tournaments because of the style of football they play. La Maranja yeah. Mecánica. They play a, a, a beautiful, just like fast, quick uh, style, and their goals are very attractive. And they did hurt us that one time with a no foot penal. Yeah. Um, they, <laughs> but hey, maybe they don't deserve here's, it. <laughs> I know, right? But Rita, hey, you know one thing? Like I would say from from adding to what like from this group before we go to the next one is 
if Qatar plays Netherlands and they surprise him with a tie that puts him out of the you know next round, that'd be some. I know Bangara would be pissed because he already has a strong character. But in case that happens, yeah, what I can see, I think if I, I, fuck it, I don't care. I think Qatar, <laughs> I think Qatar, if, if if they end up making a run or perform like getting some results. Mm -hmm. There's been so much corruption and bribery right. for this World Cup that <laughs> no shit. Shit. I'm not even. Good. They're gonna have they're gonna have twelve twelve people playing for them because you gotta add the ref. You gotta so, something something's yeah. gonna happen. The VAR yeah. the VAR is gonna be weird. It's like, I, I just wanted to say <laughs> that. Penal is cuando, gonna be. <laughs> they're gonna know how it feels like. <laughs> cuando cuando los cuando los vi aquí contra Estados Unidos. Oh sí, se vieron bien. Se, se, se vio un bien. equipo muy compacto, un equipo muy bien trabajado. Mm -hmm. O sea, era un partido que amistoso, yeah. creo, ¿no? Yeah, era no, la, no, no este uh, Gold Cup. Oh, it was the Gold Cup. It was the Gold Cup. Yeah, because yeah, Mexico was playing. Um, Mexico was playing. Was it Canada or Jamaica? And sure. they're reliant. Oh. It's the same night. Yeah, yeah, yeah like I can't same. remember which one it was, but I saw them and they were pretty solid. I mean, yeah, they're the new team, but they look pretty compact, pretty, pretty good playing together. There were some players that you can see that they were popping up, doing little things, little moves here and there. Here and there. Yeah. Um, but no, man, I, I feel like Senegal is going to take first, for sure. First? Yeah. So the man is going to come through? I think so. Oh, si no, los lasers. <laughs> They're going to fucking laser beam everybody. I don't know if you saw that penal. That penal against, that, uh, uh, I've never seen Salah. Salah, like that, Salah. 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 I thought was Mexico like, was Salah, bad until Salah I saw that shit. Rave, bro. Dude. Like, Allah, like, I, I thought, like, we were bad and I saw that. Because they even have to score, like, uh, they have to uh, pretty much cover and escort este Salah out of the stadium after the game was over because they were throwing so much shit at, at That's him. That's crazy. Like, how do you not repeat the penalty until they stop? Like, how yeah. is there not a rule that protects the penalty shooter from, from lasers, lasers in yeah. your eye? That's <laughs> fucked up, dude. And they were doing, they were also <laughs> doing, wasn't just, they were doing lasers to the goalkeeper too. Yeah. Like, man, it wasn't just, dude. there wasn't just like one laser. Like, I'm talking about like, like the whole better second was doing the laser. <laughs> Salah is legally blind now. He, <laughs> he, 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 he can't see, bro. He had a bad day that day, dude. <laughs> all right, all right. Uh, group B, group B. I would say, I would take that one. Uh, USA. First, England second. Wales is going to make it to the next round. Um, because from the promotion, I don't think Ukraine... It's not that they can't, but it's just... They, got a lot of they have a lot on. of stuff going on, so I don't think the uh, World Cup would be good for them. But, however, who knows? Yeah. Um, so, in case, you know, if, if Ukraine makes it to the World Cup, then they're going to be the Cinderella story of this World Cup, I believe. But I, I think uh, uh, Wells and then Iran. Um, I got to say, the U.S. is going to beat England. Hell yeah. And, and, uh, and, and when, they, when they play, they're going to tie with Wells. They're going to beat England. And they're going to beat Iran. They're going to end up with seven points. Oh, shit. Wells <laughs> is going to, you know, that U.K. that, you know, like they already know each other. Mm. I think Wells and England, they're going to tie. Um, but that's still going to give enough points to England when they beat Iran so they can make it to the next round. So the second place is going to be between Wales and England, depending on how many scores they scored, how many goals they scored in Iran. Um, I'm not, that's what I said. Uh, no, who's going second? England. Okay. No, I'm, I'm going to go England, US, and, and Wales. In that round. Yeah. I think so. we're I think we're underestimating the Saran team. They, from 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 what I've from what I've seen, they're really good at set pieces. They're really strong. Um they score goals. They have they have uh, good forwards that play in that, that play in the Premier League or some, some European leagues. Um but at the same time, you got England. I would love to see the US just just smack them in the face, dude. Because England, to me, is the most arrogant national team in the world. I yeah. say that because I know English football uh, fans and soccer players, like, they think that, yes, your league is the best in the world, but, in my opinion. But 
it's because of all the diversity you bring. People from yeah. all over the world, the best players come and play there. But your national team, great players, they haven't really done much. Right. And and to have that ego, so I would love to see the U.S. kick England's ass. You know, take it back to the fucking English Revolution. You know, you know, Great Revolution over here. Nineteen seventy six. Bring yeah. that shit back. <laughs> 1776 that too <laughs> no this no. is how this is why i'm dyslexic <laughs> but uh i'm gonna say um i'm gonna say england is 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 gonna barely be first i think i think usa can pat, go second you can go uh, third. and then iran third and then out of the well scotland U ukraine fourth and I would love to see Ukraine make it and as much as, you know, Gareth yeah. is cool and fuck yeah, he makes badass goals. But you, I think that would be great for them um, because there's and been a lot of stories. Yeah. The sports is like the perfect arena to um, put put your, your, your country's best foot forward. Mm -hmm. And they're having, I think they're the most motivated team in the world with what's going on back home. And they would give their people a lot of hope through dark times yeah 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 if they make it to the next round and i'm gonna we're gonna have to circle back to this group uh once they play yep right. um group after june so i'll take c c Dale, David. C. who we got who we got who's in it obviously argentina is gonna Oof. take it first mexico is gonna take it second um i think i think the way it's set up right now i think that's how it's gonna go the way it's set up yeah like argentina mexico poland and then from the draw or yeah because yeah. the draw well, has yeah, it, it has them in the different oh and okay. how you put it here gotcha, gotcha. In, in our outline okay so yeah, first yeah. place argentina oh yeah that's how i had it right there my bad yeah, yeah, yeah you're right you're poland. right poland yeah, yeah yeah poland third and then saudi arabia wait pues que está fumando porque i have qatar first on the group eh? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Uh, it's just this yeah. group C that you yeah, have. Yeah, okay. I think you that have it in a way that that's how how they're gonna end up. So we think uh you got you think I think so. So Mexico's gonna do what they always do. They're gonna beat Argentina. The the game that you think they're gonna lose, they're gonna they're gonna win. The game that you think they're gonna win, they're gonna, they're gonna tie it, or lose. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then at, at the last one, they're gonna be depending off of someone else. <laughs> 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 no, nah, no, I hope let's not. Hope, let's I hope, hope not. that doesn't happen. But, but if I you look, no, actually, 2014, they they depended on themselves because they they oh, made yeah. a first place and no, yeah, Holland made a second place, assholes. But oh, <laughs> um, I, I would say Mexico is going to be first place if oh. if if Mexico can beat Argentina. Poland or Poland. They they're, beat Poland. They're playing Poland first, and Poland is one of those. You know, everybody's like. And it's like I'm not overly confident saying they're gonna no they're they're the best better than Poland but it's just Mexico knows how to play like this first they're two team. games yeah. mm -hmm. so Mexico's gonna beat Poland they're gonna tie or beat Argentina and they're gonna they're gonna win against South Saudi Arabia they're gonna now depending on what happens in the other group it's what's gonna happen to Mexico if they were you know in the next round mm -hmm. pero I think Argentina, you know, they're gonna be shocked. They're gonna come out confident, overly confident. And in the and in the group stage, Argentina doesn't know how to play them. They get better as they go into the, you know in the knockout stages. But group stage, Argentina struggles. So Mexico is you know gonna pull another Germany on them. He's gonna pull another Brazil on them. So Mexico, and then second, who's gonna be Argentina? Oh, okay. Argentina gonna make it. They got. They have to, man. It's it's Messi's last World Cup. Mm -hmm. Poland. Poland. I, I mean, no, like there's there's good players in Poland, but for for the World Cup, I mean, last year they have, they had about the same amount of players, and it's not gonna be easy. It's not gonna be easy for Mexico. I think it's not. They, they they have to. Like I agree with you. They have to beat Poland, and I think mm -hmm. we're all like just expecting Saudi Arabia to not do well. Yeah. yeah. To, <laughs> yeah. To, to to get knocked around. Uh, but also at the same time, they're going to be in um, in Qatar, so they're going to have some home field advantage. Yeah. But I mean, it's football. Yeah. So. Yeah. Logically, I would say Argentina first, Mexico second, Poland third, Saudi Arabia. Yep. All right. Group D: France, Denmark, 
Tunisia, and the winner of Peru, Australia, and United Arab Emirates. <laughs> Denmark first, Peru second, France is out. And what? Is what? Out. No, 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 no. France is out. No. France is out, dude. Okay. Nah, <laughs> he, uh, it, no. There's a rule, a new rule in soccer, in, in, uh, in World no. Cup in World Did Cup. Did you tournament. see Benzema today? I don't care. <laughs> There's there's a new rule in in World Cup tournaments. The champion of the previous World Cup since 2002 doesn't make that doesn't team. make the group stage in the in the following one. I so think that's just for me. It's just uh, here's 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 why. Looking at how Pogba is, you know, his reaction in the last game. Looking at what Griezmann's going through, Mbappe not winning in the Champions League, you know, that that. Stuff affects you in the long run with your national team. Um, Peru, I feel like they're going to go second because they're going to be motivated to, you know, once they make it out of the knock, like the promo mm-hmm. promotion game, mm-hmm. hopefully they do. And Denmark, I, I, f- I feel like Denmark has, has a pretty solid team, very unknown players. You know, we don't know the starting 11, but you know, Ericsson. I mean, Ericsson. Like I said, we don't know these started in 11, but we know a couple. Yeah, we know Ericsson. So, <laughs> Ericsson, thank you for coming back. Thank you for, you know, coming back. Man, uh-huh. that's that's a wild story. That's so, what I'm, I'm pulling for Denmark. In that's why I feel like Denmark is going to be first yeah, and Peru second. Yeah, all his team, teammates are going to rally around him. You know, that's that's cr- what a crazy story to, to uh, have a cardiac arrest, mm-hmm. you know, be pronounced dead, and then come back to life and come mm-hmm. back to high quality And he'd be scoring goals, too. Yeah, He's, se le subió yeah. el muertito, pero se bajó y dijo, ah, cabrón. <laughs> Yeah, man, so uh, that's crazy, but uh, yeah, in this group, I think France has to go through. Bro. I think they I, have they're to. not gonna. I'm not, I'm not I, saying. I, I'm not, not saying they're not gonna win go. it either. I don't think they're gonna win. Yeah, I don't me think neither. Gonna but, win, but they have to. They are. I think they, they are, have think. to now. Are they going to? Like, no. if, yes, they if, if they didn't, if they didn't make it, it would be almost as big. You remember the uh, 2006 World Cup with Brazil when they had. Yeah, or the or best players in the world. I mean, they got knocked out by France or Germany in 2018. Yeah, but it's different. I man. mean, Italy won the Euros and they, yeah, but they weren't didn't make it. They weren't around this other selecciones, you know. Like, yeah, dude. But uh, I, I don't, I don't think. Know. I think. I mean, I, even France had a pretty good team in 2000 in 2002. I will mm. say yes. Mbappe lost Champions League and he's probably going through it. And, Griezmann is, you know, struggling too in his own way. I mean, remember but what I said though. This is a World Cup. Bro. Yeah, this it's is a different. This is a total right. This is going to be yeah. their, their their chance to just uh-huh. say fuck all this. I'm about to show up. Yeah. Now, now the one that I would say is going to come through and pull for his team is Benzema. Hey man, El Gato. Benzema is going to do whatever he can. He's going to score goals, but I don't think it'll be enough. I I don't think for France he's he's the player that that he is in Madrid though. No. Not Benzema. The, the thing about Benzema is he like, just came back. You remember ben, too. Benzema too. is very uh, accommodating. Like he will be what you need him to be. True. When he played with Cristiano and Real Madrid, he yeah. always played second fiddle. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Giving more passes, mm-hmm. like feeding. You know. And now he has to be that man for Real Madrid, and he's showing it in these Champions League games where he's scoring hat trick after hat trick. That's crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, so you yeah, said something. I, you said a good point about Benzema. Yeah. Being a player that is accommodating, mm-hmm. but his teammates are not accommodating. Like That's who? one like say Mbappe is not accommodating. No, he then doesn't score. Himself. Griezmann yeah. is not accommodating, so there's gonna be a conflict when it comes to Benzema pulling, pulling, doing his his move where he pulls almost through the line, and then he comes back in. That's una diagonal. They're gonna be, you know, Griezmann's gonna be for me. I can just see this in the game. Almost to make it to the next round, but they lose. They're losing. Mm. You know, Benzema doing his play. You know, taking everybody. Pa pa pa. That's the pass to Griezmann. And Griezmann is very atrás porque se cayó. <laughs> Damn, my boy Rich has yeah. got the crystal ball. He's looking into the future. Ahorita se está transformando en money vidente, my friend. <laughs> mucho, mucho, Walter, mucho. Walter, me queda amor. Yeah. Y lo so, que son. Y lo que son. Al rato le doy a la doña. Knock, prepare yourself. <laughs> All right, all right. <laughs> uh, for me, it's gonna be France. Yeah, obviously, um, it's it is gonna be March second. Yep. Mm-hmm. And 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 I think Peru is gonna be third. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Tunisia. Okay. Tunisia. I I, 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 agree, with, I agree with that. I, I I would say that's that's what I predict. Orale, orale, pues. Cool, cool. This one though. All right, Group E, Group E. <sighs> this Man, was that, a good the one. axis of powers right here. Yeah. All right, you got Spain, 
Germany, Japan, and hopefully Costa Rica, maybe New Zealand. I think Ooh. I think it's gonna be Spain, Germany, Costa Rica, Japan. Man, that was quick. No, I think it's gonna be Germany, then Spain, then Japan, and then Costa Rica. Okay. Fourth. Um Germany has to uh, they have to make it pass. They, they they they're not they're not a national team that they had a massive failure last World Cup. Mm-hmm. They did. So I see them I see them passing first. Redeeming themselves. They're, they're gonna look like a machine. That's they're, what gonna, I'm they're gonna look too. like they're winning it. Yeah. I'm not saying they're gonna win, but in the group they're stages gonna they're gonna with come everything. with like everything. Yeah. So I, I would say that they'd be first. I would say uh Spain would be second. And Costa Rica would be third. Ooh. Japan would be fourth. Japan. I just I just respect Japan because they're usually they're very solid. organized. Yeah. They're very organized. Yeah. And they hustle, dude. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think Spain, um they're gonna they got young players. They have young players, man. And but they have young, very good players. Very good players. Very talented players. So I think they they would know how to play against Germany. Uh, that's gonna be uh, the deciding game. Who's gonna go to the, you know first and second place? Mm-hmm. Because they already know. I feel like they're gonna beat Costa Rica and they're gonna beat Japan. Yeah. Unless Costa Rica pulls at 2014 and they beat everybody and they make it to the next round and yeah, I <laughs> but mean, it's I, gonna be hard. It'll be. I doubt they'll make a run like but that. But it'll be it'll be hard. Hey, I'm, we're rooting for well, them. We're, I, but I, I'm I rooting do, for I, them. I am rooting for them. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Um, but I, I just feel like Spain is, is one of my teams that they're all, I'm always going to think that they're going to take it. Mm-hmm. So right now, that team that I'm seeing with Luis Enrique, mm-hmm. I feel like they can take the World Cup. Dude. And the one thing is they don't have the bullshit that happened last World Cup where este, what's his name, ended Lope, up the, leaving Lopetegui. Uh-huh. Ended up going to Madrid and that yeah, messed that was, up. Yeah, messed up. Yeah, you see. They, they don't have happens. that problem yeah, we, right we've now. We've seen it throughout uh, the World Cups and stuff like that. And, and mm. when they switch coaches in the middle of the, a tournament, they end up, yeah, right. it's failure, you know. So it doesn't I, work out. I think, I think uh, Luis Enrique, he's not going to go to Barcelona or Real Madrid. No. 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 So that that's a different scenario. Not right, uh, now. not right now. I think they have a pretty consistent. He's been, he already knows his players. So he he knows how to he would know how to play Germany. He with knows his the player. style of play or the or the players too, and right. the, the style of play that Spain needs to. Play. I feel like that's gonna be the best game of the group stage. Mm-hmm. Oh, the uh, this uh, for here, Spain Germany. Spain Germany. Yeah, right. No, I think I think we got a better game in hand, and I'll tell you why later. Ooh, <laughs> for different reasons. Uh-huh. All right, so we all made our predictions for Group E. Yeah. Uh-huh. All right, let's move on. Group F, Belgium. Croatia, Morocco, and Canada. I think um, it's pretty straightforward, I think. Yep. Canada, Croatia, Belgium, Morocco. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's what I think. Canada won? Yeah. Holy oh, no, no, no. Shit. No, yeah, I don't think so. Canada, no. Croatia? I think, I think, I think. You think Belgium's out? Yeah. So here's the reason Oof. why I'm saying they're going to be, uh, you know. The they're going to be. They're, they're going to be. <laughs> they're going to be. I don't think, I don't think Belgium knows how to play the World Cup games. I mean, they, they know how to. Individually, they can play champions, but when it comes to playing in the World Cup or in the Euros, for the team that they have, they should be winning it at least. But they're, you don't you don't consider them contenders for a Euro League. What makes us con- makes us think they're contenders or for World Cup? And I think if you don't with all those players, they just they don't have what it takes. I mean, Mexico can beat this Belgian team. I, with the players I that mean, Mexico has, I don't know. I, I, I mean, it's that. they have individual players, man. They have a lot, a lot, a lot of them. So I, that's why I'm never count, counting them like last because I know what they can do. So m- this is what I'm thinking is going to happen: is Croatia, Belgium, mm-hmm. Canada, and Morocco. I think it'll be Belgium first, Canada second, Croatia third, Morocco second. The fourth, I think Canada can beat Croatia because Croatia is, has <clears throat> they're aging. Mm-hmm. Oh, players, yeah, they got right. eight, mm-hmm. they're, they're aging. Yeah. They're they're 
probably the last generation that they'll play like a World together. Cup together, and then yeah. it'll have to be a reset. Mm -hmm. So, and Canada, on the other hand, they the asphyxia. They uh, you, you saw how they pressure, right. how, they, how they attack. Belgium has that capacity too to 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 play on the counter, to yeah. play quick and vertical with los pases que da de Bruyne, like filtrados and just the tempo of what they play. You have Lukaku up top. You have players like that. They're, they're physical. So I think I think Croatia will be third. Now, here's the one reason why I would say Croatia is going to make it to the next round and take out Belgium. It's because World Cups are meant for aged players that know how to play those tournaments. And Croatia did pretty good in this last one. So they already know, like, hey, you know what? They were they're going to out, they're going to out, you know, run us, but we're going to get them by, you know, by being Croatia, like by playing the way we could play any other team. I mean, so I, I think, I think because of, of the age and for the experience, from the experience, they're going to, they're going to end up, you know, knocking out Belgium. Ooh. It's a good group. I mean, we'll see what happens there. Um, I, I feel like the, the first game is going to be a tie between Belgium and Croatia. Sorry, Belgium and Canada. And then Croatia is going to beat Morocco. And then whenever Belgium plays Croatia, it is going to be another tie. And the only point they're going to, like three points they're going to get against Morocco uh, will be Belgium. But I do, I do feel like Canada is going to beat Croatia and Morocco. But Ooh. I don't know, man. It's All a right. tough one. It's a tough one, but yeah. I... And then uh, the next one is... Brazil. Brazucas. Are we going to get our Yoga Bonito back? I think it's already there. No, the, the question is, we want it, but are they going to give it to us? I would love to see it. They're already dancing. Paca What's his name? Paqueta. Paqueta. <laughs> it's already dancing, bro. I think I think something, something is coming up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think uh, this one, Brazil is going to be first. Mm-hmm. Um, I want to say Cameroon second, mm -hmm. and probably Switzerland third, and then Serbia. I'd say Brazil first, Switzerland second, Cameroon third, and Serbia fourth. Yeah. Switzerland just because they defend really well. Mm -hmm. And they give me good chocolate too. And beautiful, beautiful scenery. I love Switzerland. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to say beautiful women. I was like, mm -hmm. nah, <laughs> man. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, it's okay complimenting people as long as you do the right way. Three second rule, dude. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> what do you um, think, Richie? Uh, Brazil first, Cameroon second, Serbia third, and Swiss Switzerland oh, fourth. Wow. We had different ones, okay. I have different ones. I I, I want uh, an African team to do good in the World Cup. Yeah, we haven't seen I'm pretty, one in a I while. Mean, I'm sh they Senegal. can do. They have a lot of talent, man. Um, I think Senegal should yeah. make a run. But in terms of all the groups, I just want to see someone not European win. I know that sounds I know. weird or maybe whatever, but. I'm tired of European champions, man. Yeah. Like, we got to switch it up. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> come it's, on. You got to bring it back home. It's back getting home. boring, right? Yeah. yeah. It's, it, it's not that it's getting boring. It's but just like, that it's exciting. But, you know, it's just, you know how you know how it feels on this side of the world? Yeah. Like, it's just, it just, the alegría, like, the dance, <laughs> the culture, you know? Like, it's, we got we to gotta bring it home. You know what I'm saying? So, if Argentina makes it to, the, like, first place in their group, Man, they gotta have to win the, win the World Cup. Like they might. Yes, I that's would. That's if if they yeah. like, you know, if I they make love, it, I would love to see Messi lift that cup, dude. It would be nice. It would be nice. They, they, I mean, he has the players like, and, the, and these players are behind him compared to the previous ones. I feel like they they can, dude. They're, they they can give us a surprise. The players have to go against the el gigante de la concaf. Yes, so, <laughs> so in the last group, Portugal, Ghana, Uruguay, and uh, Korea Republic, South Korea. I think. Portugal, well, Uruguay, Portugal, Korea, and Ghana. That's my take. Mm, Portugal, Uruguay. The way it's, you put it here, that's that's so. That's Portugal happen. first. You saying yeah, Uruguay, Uruguay, and then South, South Korea, Korea, and then Ghana. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, for this one, I would say oof, this is a very even group to me. Mm -hmm. 
So I'm just gonna shake it up. Fuck it. I'm gonna say Ghana first. <laughs> Damn. Um, I mean, and I, I cannot I'm wait to see Ghana and Uruguay play. I know. How that's gonna, that, the, the history, it's physical, dude. The history, no, the history with uh with Suarez. Yeah. <laughs> they want to play against where him. he uh. He, he oh yeah, the the two thousand ten. He he threw himself. He threw yeah. himself. Yeah. Did, didn't he bite someone that same game? No, that was a different. No, no, that, that, was, was that, that was Italy. That was Italy in two thousand fourteen. Suarez was going off that cup, dude. <laughs> okay. I mean, it's gonna be Suarez's last World Cup, so I don't know what he's gonna it's do. Gonna, it's his last dance. It's the last dance for Suarez. It's the last Messi. dance for Modric. It's the last dance for Ronaldo. Messi. Messi. Chicharito. Memo Choa. Mix it. Memo Choa. <laughs> there's a there's a lot of last dances here. That's why missing the World Cup, Neymar is a big deal. I mean, no, I mean, Neymar has another one. But what I'm saying is that um, it's more than football. You know, these are memories that you make forever. You you always have that memory of the certain games and the resultados and the surprises. So, creo que van a haber trancados en este grupo ahí. Yeah, yeah. That's why. <laughs> well, like that's why I was saying. <laughs> I, I think I mean, if you look at group. Portugal and and like like with between Suarez and Ronaldo, like oh yes, yeah, there'll be some, there's some there's some <laughs> but, and but, you know the style they play Uruguay mm -hmm. they play yeah. strong physical la garra la garra es, charrua ese grupo va a ser puras me, patadas man. Cup, physical players va a parecer domingo Pepe, Pepe. <laughs> yeah that was Pepe's that's gonna what, come through that's what I'm saying that's gonna be a fun group to watch yeah. dude and South Korea hey give me all uh, what's his name a son he he'll fight you too man he's a soldier there you go um, but uh, I'm excited I'm excited for the World Cup do I think there's a group of death not really. I think all, I think most of the groups are pretty equal. Yeah, there's no uh, group of death. No Maybe this death. one right here because of I the think, Chitrancasos. I think uh, if, if you want to say group of death, the group of death is probably the uh, the, the 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 governing bodies of Qatar that that built stadiums. There's been a lot of deaths. That's my group of death right there. Oh wow! Man. Um, yeah, it's just yeah. We got to talk about stuff like that. Yeah, we should. Yeah, we should, and we'll get into it in a second. Predictions on who will make it out of the group stage. We've already gone over that. Who's yeah. going to be champion? I say Spain. Oof. I I have a few that I don't have one specific one. Okay, but it's between Brazil, Spain, and Argentina. I would love to see Spain, Brazil, or, or Argentina would be good. Or Argentina win the World Cup. Man, fuck it, we. Uh, and if, Mexi if Mexico wins, I'm not going to work for like the next <laughs> month. I'm <laughs> gonna be. I'm gonna walk out naked around my block for a whole month. Yeah, the history. Yeah, the Mark his words, please. <laughs> hey, yeah, Mexico, I, I come through. Como es el charito, hay que imaginar las cosas chingonas. <laughs> I think what the way say? the groups are, there is a possibility that. There could be a Mexico USA final. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Calmate, Twitter space. <laughs> Calmate, what's, what's up? Uh, nah, but uh, en I, un mundo paralelo, Estados it, Unidos contra México. If I have to, <laughs> yeah, it's real tight. If I have to put my money down, I'll say Brazil. I, I would, Brazil. I, I want them to. I would say they would. They would win the World Cup. So you want the paqueta? No, it's because I feel like they're the ones that look like a solid. They look solid. Yeah, top, top to bottom. Yeah. Um. So. Now we're going to go into that, you know, that bullshit part, which is, first of all, having the World Cup in Qatar. Yeah, well, That's just, that. in general, I mean. It's crazy. It's crazy. It's, you, you, you shared an article, you know, it's just about how it's soaked in blood and how there's, like, I think you mentioned there's cur current global indictment that, you know, they're investigated for bribery and corruption. Yep. It, it's, it, it's just, for me, it's, from the beginning, I mean, the last World Cup was in Russia. They covered up a lot of stuff to make Russia look nice. Mm -hmm. They're going to do the same bullshit here in Qatar. And one thing that pissed me off is, besides the corruption part, is the the human rights part. Mm -hmm. I mean, what are they going to, you know, regarding women, you know, regarding drinking. Like, it's, it, people are like, whenever I hear, you know, advertisements about Qatar, no, you... You come to our country, you have to live it like us. And I'm like, yeah. we're out of respect, but no. Like, if you're going to host a, a tournament like this big, you have to accommodate to the people that are going to come. Um, I'm not saying, like, of course, there's going to be crazy people out there, you know, partying and stuff. But it's just, I, I don't like everything that surrounds this World Cup. And I think that's what makes it weird to have it in, over there. Yeah, definitely. Uh, so, yeah, the article I shared is a New York Times article that <clears throat> basically goes into all the corruption and bribery <clears throat> that brought the World Cup to Qatar. Because mm -hmm. if you think about it, 
uh, a World Cup in Qatar is very strange. The climate is is very extreme. We had to sh- shift the entire calendar of soccer to to have this tournament in the winter. They had to build completely new stadiums throughout the whole country, mm-hmm. all with this idea that they're developing soccer in this in this nation. But at the same time, you know, it, it, it's a country whose whose leaders and are are associated with people that are that are invading their their neighbors, mm-hmm. similar to how Russia is invading Ukraine. Ukraine. Mm-hmm. These people are invading Yemen. These people are invading uh, their neighboring country and like causing the same type of pain and suffering and unnecessary death Mm -hmm. and on top of that just the simple building of the stadiums has caused hundreds of thousands of deaths uh, Mm -hmm. because of horrible working conditions working in that heat that hundred plus heat day in day out and these workers are not people from they're not qatari they're people from Mm -hmm. other countries Mm -hmm. uh south southeast asian countries that come and with the promise of making money and sending some to their family and then they realize that as soon as they get there their visas are taken away and they're basically stuck with not enough money to go back and living in horrible conditions with horrible food and horrible like uh areas to live mm-hmm. and it, it it's a tragedy but it's gonna get sports washed we're gonna watch this world cup people are gonna go and celebrate and qatar is gonna have this huge ceremony and it's gonna seem like it, like it's okay like, like the it's, best country like ever it's a, like it's a perfect country yeah and when you have uh the president of fifa um infantino mm-hmm. sent his whole family to live in qatar private schools private everything the corruption is very clear mm-hmm. when you have the president of fifa sending his whole family to live in qatar live in a very very high privileged lifestyle mm-hmm. when the reality is that that people are suffering and people have died um, to make this World Cup happen. And a lot of, you know, this happens, this happens in every country to right, some right. extent. Mm-hmm. So I think uh, we have to keep the same energy whenever there's a World Cup here and in Mexico and in Canada or when there's a World Cup in another nation. Anyway. We have to, we got to look at it a little bit closer. Yeah. And like, say, for example, like you were like, there's a, there's a, pl- uh, a, a part of the article that you shared from the Independent also, or was it you or me? Yeah, shirt independent. Um, that talks about you know the injured workers or even deaths, the families of those pe- the person that died. They're not taken care of by the organization, mm-hmm. which is something that I mean, it's just this World Cup, which just made you know, like you said, like there's violating every every human right for everyone that came and worked by taking away their visa, which is the one thing they can, the one human right that they can have to move out of a situation where you, you know, like say for, for the worker itself, say you go to Qatar, they take out your visa, you can't go anywhere anymore. You're stuck. You're stuck. And that's just, that's just the principle of, a human right is, is just to be able to get out of the place with your own document and you can't because they take it away from you. And, and for me, that's just, that's what brings, brings it, it more, more of a, more of a dilemma and a conflict because I want to enjoy soccer and I want to enjoy our beautiful sport that we have, but there's just so much bullshit with this, with this, with this um World Cup. Yeah, and then you could see it already starting the World Cup draw. I don't know if you saw, but it was very glamorous, right? <laughs> yeah. They had movie stars, Idris Elba. It looked like they put so much money into the draw, like to make it look amazing. Es que es lo que vamos, o sea, si te pones a pensar cómo cómo toda la ciudad no se fue creando de Qatar, no, pura gente este, con mucho dinero en form- para para formar estos edificios para Petróleo. formar la ciudad básicamente. Sí, sí. Desde ahí empieza todo, no, y dices. Tenemos que darle a esta a esta a este país le tenemos que dar que lo mire todo el mundo. ¿Cómo hacemos que lo mire todo el mundo? Ah, tenemos una Copa Mundial acá. Aquí va a venir gente de todo el mundo y va a ver lo que tenemos. Claro, lo lo bueno que tenemos, ¿no? Entre comillas lo digo porque como tú dices todo el sufrimiento de estas personas que vinieron con falsas promesas que les hicieron, "Oh, vente a trabajar acá que te vamos a a cuidar, te vamos a pagar bien, te vamos, tienes todos estos beneficios." 
y, y cuando llegaron, pues se dieron cuenta de que era mentira, ¿no? Uh, pues es triste porque, como tú lo dices, Richie, uh, el fútbol para nosotros es vida, ¿no? Nos da, nos da ese aliento, nos da esa pasión de, de, de ver cada partido. Uh, y, y ahorita estamos con, como lo vemos, no lo vemos, queremos ver el, el fútbol porque es lo que nos gusta, pero no queremos porque está por, por todo esto que está pasando con Qatar, por todo lo que hicieron para crear la Copa del Mundo ahí, o sea, no te dan muchas ganas de verlo, o sea, no, no quieres, pero está el fútbol y quieres verlo porque está el fútbol y, uh -huh. y estás como entre medio de, de algo bueno y algo malo que no quieres hacer, ¿me entiendes? Y, yeah. y lastimosamente que la corrupción, como lo dijiste, es muy claro te ponen esa encrucijada que no sabes qué hacer. ¿no? Al final de cuentas, como, así como nosotros, por ejemplo, ¿qué podemos hacer? No podemos hacer mucho. ¿me entiendes? Ya esto ya, ya es un hecho, va a pasar, uh -huh. ya está uh -huh. hecho. Y, y lo único que podemos hacer es tal vez tomarnos ese espacio y decir lo, lo que sentimos right. sobre eso. Y, y, y hay que expre expresarlo. Aunque veamos el par un partido, a que veamos la Copa del Mundo, no quiere decir que estamos... Este, Uh, apoyando lo que hicieron, lo estamos haciendo porque no tenemos otra opción, tenemos que ver los partidos, ¿no? o queremos ver los, queremos partidos. Ver los partidos, queremos ver los partidos, yeah. y, y este, te sientes mal al final de cuentas. Yeah. Now, like David saying, I mean, this World Cup is going to happen. This World Cup is already is already a fact. No matter what, there's no there's no stopping this. Right. But the most we can do is just try to raise awareness uh, for maybe some people that maybe are, don't know uh, of all the corruption and what's happened, how many lives have been lost. But we're going to watch it. It's a celebration. It's something that is that for us is pure, but now it's tinged with this, um, with this deep sadness because we know that all the suffering behind it. Mm -hmm. But I think as, as long as we're aware and, and we talk about it like we're doing in this space, mm -hmm. we can at least uh, uh, enjoy it responsibly. Yeah. And what I mean by True. that, I mean by... We're going to watch the World Cup where there's going to be football, mm -hmm. pure. Yep. But there's also going to be a lot of propaganda, a lot of Qatar. Look at this. Mm -hmm. It's so advanced, so clean, so beautiful. And now that we that we know, well, since we know the, the, the behind the scenes, we can maybe not really care for that part. Right. Maybe say that's, that's just, you know, a, a pretty picture yeah. that doesn't show the true story. And there's one thing that, like, say... We are blessed to, you know, to live in a country where we don't have those issues. I mean, even even in Mexico, we don't have those issues. Even even in Salvador, yeah. you know, there's no like. For me, when you take some uh, passport away from someone and you don't allow them to travel, you have to make them work. Mm -hmm. That's slavery uh, right there. Yeah, yeah, so I'm I'm blessed that fact that there's nothing mm -hmm. like that for us. So. I, I I hope you know we can just enjoy the most out of it. Be responsible, like you said, and and you know enjoy the moment, but not be blinded by the shiny the light of of yeah. Qatar. Right, and, and that's the thing too, because I remember you were saying there. There's not only that too, though. There's restrictions mm -hmm. of who can come and all these rules, all these laws that they have yeah. that that you gotta follow when you come to this country, right? Right, right. So look. So there's no equality, there's no freedom for everybody, right? So that's another thing that we got to talk about too, um, and 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 kind of like put it out there that that it that it's like, for example, in other countries that the work has been there before, there's no this there's no restrictions of you know bringing a girlfriend, bringing a friend, uh, you know something like that, a sandwich, uh, yeah. a lunch. <laughs> uh, But now, are you drinking, for example, I mean, there's going to be different uh, restrictions in Qatar. Yeah, that's, I mean, I, they're saying, there's somebody that on ESPN, the Portes, and they're like, man, the beer thing is going to hit <laughs> la raza. <laughs> yeah. so, I'm too sober for this shit. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. We'll Mexico see lost. I'm too sober. Uh, so, uh, one thing that we all agree on to talk about, the Chavineta. La chavineta, súbete a la chavineta. Chavi time, baby, let's go. Ya te subiste a la chavineta. I'm, I'm on here, baby, I'm ready to go. I'm, I'll go wherever. <laughs> I'll go whatever Chavi takes Whatever Chavi tells Shabby me to do, me. I'll do. He tells yeah. me to drink this beer, I'll drink, I'll drink it. Yeah. Man, this Barcelona right here is... It's, it's a, I'm, I'm a Barcelona fan. 
I am glad to see this going on. But but let me tell you something before we we say anything because you you remember before the classical we had that episode and we talk about how the other podcasts were saying that Madrid this Madrid that right. Remember what I said? I said, "Hey, be careful because this Barcelona is coming." Yeah. And boom, Dead. the classical right. came and they came through. Dead. I think we were, we were, I was, maybe we were a little cautious because Dead. of what had happened in the mm. past. Yeah. But there were a lot of haters out there, man. A lot of people just enjoying Barcelona. They're going to yeah, struggle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I mean, it, I mean, that's what happens when, 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 when you're a team that has been successful and that has done the things Barcelona has done. Right. You're going to have haters out there. But my favorite thing is just like, Seeing how far in the mud Barcelona was, mm -hmm. they were financially. Yeah. Yes, um, the future was uncertain. Um, you you had Coleman as coach, Noncajaba. Players were not respecting him. Right, um, Barcelona was had lost respect throughout the world. Yes, so to see them that low and so quickly bounce back, bounce back to where they are now. Yeah, has been one of the most incredible stories. Sports stories for me this year, and I'm I'm just I'm just happy to to first of all be a culé, be a Barcelona si, fan, si, culé. And, yeah. and and just to scream every goal like with with my heart. Right. And um, I I used to get texts from uh from my my homeboy Ramiro. Oh. He, he's the biggest troll I've ever met. <laughs> <laughs> every time, uh, and every, time every time Ramiso. Every time shout out Ramiso. He's an Arsenal fan, so you know how they are. <laughs> Um, Ernie, yeah. <laughs> nah, nah, Ernie, Ernie's cool. Uh, <laughs> nah, er, every time Messi would not perform back when he was the Barca, he would send me a text. Oh, wow. Did Messi cook? Did how, how did Messi do? Well, just like poking me, just poking me. <laughs> I was like, all right, bro, okay, I know he watched the game, but now I don't get any text from him when Barcelona's killing it. I don't know where his texts are, but um, I know he's watching. Cause oh he's watching cause uh Aboma Young is with Aboma Young. Young. And, oh, yeah, uh, he's yeah, a yeah. huge Abba, Abba. he's a huge Aboma Young Aboma fan. Friend. So now he's like a Barca fan, like low key. <laughs> he came in the clutch, man. It's cool, it's cool. I like Arsenal. <laughs> Eso sí lo tenemos que recalcar, eh. Tiene que ver mucho Bumeyan llegar al equipo para, para darle un poquito de solidez, porque el, el equipo venía trabajando muy bien, sí. Pero uh -huh. le faltaba gol, lo que, lo que no teníamos. Llega Bumeyan y pum, los goles llegan. Pero lo, lo interesante es que llega. Aubameyang sin gol. Sin gol. Llega, oh, llega, sí. Yo no llega, lo quería. I, I llega, didn't want no, him. Llega, like after, he, he came with zero goal. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. He right. came at, a, at the lowest point of his career. He, at, of his recent he, career. He came to Barca because Arsenal didn't really count on him. So, yeah. Yeah. so he was like a reject, right? And llega al Barcelona, le da la oportunidad y este cabrón viene y lo hace, güey. O sea... Oh. Abumeyan necesitaba right. a Barcelona y Barcelona necesitaba a Abumeyan. O sea, it fue was, mutuo. It was a perfect time. Yeah. Perfect time. I, I wonder what the talk with Xavi and between Xavi and Abumeyan was in the locker room when he came in. Because yeah. he, he, he probably told them, look, man, you don't have a safe spot. We already have Ferran, so you have to come through every game. Mm -hmm. And Abumeyan came, came in like, you know, zero FX. Like He just came in like, all right, I'm just going to do my thing. Maybe he enjoyed like what was going on in the locker room. He enjoyed, you know. Yeah. Like with Xavi, he enjoyed the work that Xavi, because I feel like Xavi is the type of coach that he gives it, he he chops up like the plan, and then feeds it to you instead of like you, hey, you know this shit, you got to do it. He's more like, all right, guys, you know what? Let's let's all cut this meat, and then he he he. Just, remember that one um, anecdote that uh, Giver said about if you want to cut a tree, you know, you have to spend the first seven hours sharpening the the saw. Yeah. Each, each, each teeth of the saw. So whenever you cut, you don't have to worry about that. Yeah. I think that's, I feel like that's what Xavi does. He cares so much about every single detail of how they play. So whenever they have to perform, it's a second nature. Yeah, I, I agree. S speaking of tree, I don't know if it's kind of a weird topic. You s I don't know if you've seen trending. The, the There's a lumberjack that's trending right now. He cuts these really big logs with an X. Mm -hmm. And um, it makes uh, a lot of women aroused because he's a very sexy lumberjack. So but it's Sorry. crazy. He's going very viral, but I, I didn't know like that's, me cutting my tree or cutting the grass would just cause that type of reaction. But no, I'm I'm saying <laughs> no. the way that women <laughs> the way that women feel for this lumberjack is how I felt when I saw Pedri score that goal. He did two. Dude, he did Pedri. two amagas. Like oh my god, he he just 
For, he he played in slow like everybody was in slow dude, motion. But and he was look like at the way NBA. the way Shabby celebrates those oh, yeah. moments. His like heart, his heart, is his in. heart. Like just look at like, like that's a that's a passionate person. It's because like, he believes in these like, players. You're and like, it's like, just and when people's talking shit about them, and then he sees this, he's like, that's what I mean. That's that's why he's there. That's that's yeah. why I put him all the time. And and then, whatever talk he had, yeah. Whatever talk he had with Mbele. That dude, I would, oh, yeah. I would have loved to see what happened because Dembele was. He has two players switch. that are pretty much rejects. I mean, even for your own team, and he's Dembele had had lost the the, the afición. Yeah. He yeah. had he had zero support from yep. the from yep. the yep. fans, yeah. mm -hmm. and now he comes out on the Sevilla game, plays and gives amazing, amazing crosses. Yeah, like the whole game, mm -hmm. and he gets subbed out, and it's like an an ovation. Yeah, an yeah. ovation to Dembele. How do you go from night and day like that? That's crazy. Now, I mean, now the one thing is like they're they're in the Europe Euro League right now. Um, it's for me, it's still a tough competition because you're playing tough, playing playing team. teams that are super rocky to the top, you it's, know, it's level a, teams. It, it, it's a fantastic, fantastic so competitive tournament. I I do want like Barcelona to take the 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 Euro. It's a trophy that we don't have. We need it. We need it, and then it's it's okay to take a step back. I mean, yeah. Barcelona is literally clear, like letting every other team that wants to compete on a high level know, like you know what, take a step back, and you're gonna be able to bounce back. Like Coca said, they they had to hit rock bottom to actually yeah. come. They were in ninth place when they were mm -hmm. coached by uh, Coleman. Coleman, and Xavi came in, and we're in, on second place now. Mm -hmm. Like that's. That tells you a lot. That tells you the work that Xavi has put into this team, um, the results and everything. I mean, it's, 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 it's it, right now it's looking like a very solid team that no no team in La Liga can beat them because uh -huh. they already beat they already beat Sevilla, Sevilla yeah. they Betis, already beat Real Madrid, Real Madrid Betis, Betis. Yeah. and Atlético de Madrid. Yeah, yeah they they beat the, the top four. Yeah. yeah, and I'm a I'm a firm believer of in order for you to win something. Don't care about what the other teams do. Do your thing, and and like like say, what goes is like in 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 the past, there was always this like comparison to Madrid. And no, dude, you already got your own shit. Take care of your shit and do yeah. your shit. One thing is Xavi, the Xavi effect. The other thing is the the directors of Barcelona have been doing a really great job La with, with Laporte, mm -hmm. with like also the financial aspect of things. Yeah, you know, the, the, there's a big deal that went through with Spotify. Motomami. So uh, all, all all of you, um, all of you Barca haters, uh, thank you for listening to Spotify. <laughs> <laughs> no, <okay. laughs> no, no, but it's cool. It's it's interesting to see uh, to see all all these little or big moves and how they've they've managed to help the team in one way or another. Hey, Barca, since Austin FC hasn't picked us up yet, do you want to, you know, uh, how do you call it? Uh, Austin Bar FC Barcelona podcast. We're open to any, you know, discussions. <laughs> At the same time, man, like, <laughs> I, you know, to see, to, see, to see Barca struggling ninth place, it wasn't a good place for me. But also, I don't think it was a good place for us or a good place for the Liga. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The Liga, La Liga is respected when when teams like Barca and Madrid and Sevilla and Betis or you know these teams these Spanish teams are doing well mm -hmm. and we're seeing that uh, with uh, Barcelona's recent performances with with Madrid's performance against uh, against uh, Chelsea today yeah. they beat him three to one beat them yeah beat beat them yeah. really well and with uh, Villarreal coming do, doing yes. doing the biggest uh, sorpresa against yeah. Bayern. Hold, winning 1-0 holding them off and actually playing them al tu por tu mm -hmm. so there's a lot of superiority we were talking about it earlier with the English teams and I love Premier League I, I enjoy it but they they feel like they win, They already have mm -hmm. won without winning it mm -hmm. and these Spanish teams are, are killing it mm -hmm. and right now Barca like their level is killing it too so I really I, I really hope they come through in the in the Euro League yeah man uh, I, I'm looking forward to this Euro I'm looking forward to what Barcelona can do, and looking who forward. They, who do they got next? Frankfurt, Oof, Frankfurt. So they're playing. Um, by the time we release this episode, they already played the first game. Hopefully, it's a two-zero win for Barcelona. The one I'm excited to see in the Euro Euro Cup Euro leagues is RB Leipzig and Atalanta because those are two teams that do not give a fuck. Mm -hmm. Yeah, juegan. True. They're pretty level too. <laughs> juegan yeah. al todo. Mm. defending. Fuck it. Like we're just gonna throw everybody. They play up. like the MLS teams. 
<laughs> they're crazy, man. They can defend, but they play like they yeah, don't yeah, give a fuck. They're crazy. <laughs> so I'm excited for that game. Uh, so we, we, you know, like. Um, we, we. We, we. <laughs> <laughs> so spring is back. Hey. And, you know, that's always a chance for, for rebirth and for, you know, doing something new or fresh start. Um, what is something that, that, uh, that I look forward to is every time there's a spring for me, it's like you're going back to wearing shorts and tank tops, which is what I love. <laughs> and that's when you look the best. That's yes. when I, Hey, for real, man, Showing like, that bod. I've, I've been, you know, preparing <laughs> right. for that, that summer. I've been preparing since 10 years ago, you know, to get that beach body, <laughs> yeah, you know, you're there, brother. during, you're during there. the, during the winter, <laughs> everything goes downhill, but that's a different story. Um, but now, dude, like for me, is spring is always a, always a motivating, you know, like time of the season. You know, it's every time um, I see the sun come out and I see the, you know, there's a little bit of heat. Like I, I like, I used to like cold weather, but now I enjoy hot weather. So for me, every time spring is around, it's always about you know just going out there and doing shit. You know, yeah. Where like in the in the in the winter, winter is cold that you can't really. You really don't want to get out. You really don't want to get out. Yeah. And the spring is where, man, I just, I like cutting the, my grass with, you know, no shirt on. <laughs> and Oof, that's your shit Bringing right my there. shorts, like, all the way over here. All, and all the all the uh, neighbor ladies come out and be like, hey, Rich. Or, or you hey, know. Hey, hey, either, Rich, you need it, some water? I need either that, that <laughs> or, <laughs> or they throw water at me, but can ponga, you know, put some clothes on. But, <laughs> but man, that, that's, for me, spring is just like. You know, making sure my my yard looks good and it's clean. Mm -hmm. You know, um, and also it's good for the skin, man. You know, it's just that you know that summer, the that sun is good for your skin if you take care of it the right way. Ah, Cristiano Ronaldo, Cristiano yeah. Ronaldo, and you know that tan, the natural, <laughs> you know, beautiful tan that we get. Um, <laughs> so yeah, that's what I look forward to with with spring and new new and rebirths and all this fresh start. What about you guys? Uh, spring, yeah, like. You were saying the warm weather. Uh, spring is also um, around the time of uh, this is like my first anniversary with my wife. So we got married in the spring last year. You guys were there. Um, it Congratulations! Was a special, special time, and um, it 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 just takes me back to that to, to that day to all the all, like the butterflies that that were going through through like through me and like just what it felt like to celebrate with friends and family and to, and to have that special moment with her. And she also loves warm weather and being in the water and um there's a lot of beautiful memories with spring we we've we've shared them together yeah, we've, yeah, gone yeah, to, we we've gone camping we've gone to boat parties yep, yep we've gone we've gone out to to swim and different places in the spring yep um played great soccer games because uh, there's more light you know we we have more like quality cascara so mm -hmm. spring is always exciting for me because it's like all right you have that chance to get back to whatever goals you were you were working on that maybe you had put off mm -hmm. during the winter and have that social aspect of of uh spending time with your friends and family under the sun yeah mm -hmm. yeah i agree i mean pretty much you guys say whatever I, you know why i like spring as well um another thing for me is looking at the at the trees and the the, the green grass and the you know the the flowers, everything blooming, all of that. Mm -hmm. I love that. Um, I don't like seeing the the winter trees are all dead. You know, just they look like cadavers, <laughs> um, just just standing there. Um, I like I like I like them to have like these some you know? life. Yeah, yeah. Some I just like the green part of it, um, and and that's why I love spring too. I think it's it's the time where you can do the most things, especially for people coming from, you know, a tropical, tropical uh, climate. climate. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. We love that. We, we don't, we can take that humidity. We can take yeah. the heat. So, um, I'm saying that. And then <laughs> last time I went to El Salvador, I was like dying, but <laughs> oh well, <laughs> you know, yeah, I still, yeah. I still love it. I, uh, you know, it's my thing. I love the beach, especially, you know, during this time. Um, so yeah, that's, that's, that's what I look forward to in spring, man. Um, that's my thing too. Yep. Yeah, man. And with, uh, fresh starts and cycles and everything. Yes. Um, there's, uh, an announcement, I would say a little bit unfortunate, but there's something good out of it. Chaparro. Yes. Yes. Um, I am leaving the podcast, um, basically because I, I, I haven't been feeling well 
uh, doing it uh, just because of uh, pressure from work. Um, I don't have enough time to actually plan things and do things for the podcast. I feel like I haven't been, hel- you know, helpful or, or actually doing the help that I want to give or giving the help that I want to give. Um, and I just feel like um, that's not fair for you guys. By the way, this guy is like, I love him to death. They're, they're always 110% do it, doing whatever they're doing for whatever, either playing soccer, doing a podcast, working. Um, I have no complaints about them. Um, y, y, y tampoco quiero que piensen que me están corriendo para nada. Esta decisión la tomé yo. Yo se las dije, ellos no sabían tampoco. Se los dije hace como una semana. Este, como les digo, quiero, quiero pasar un poquito más tiempo también con mi, con mi novia. Siento que he estado un poquito aparte por las cosas que tenemos que hacer. No solamente el podcast, también el fútbol. Creo mm-hmm. que he estado invirtiendo mi tiempo en cosas que a lo mejor en el futuro no me van a hacer bien. Uh, yo creo que necesito tomar ese, ese paso atrás y, y, y hacer la, las decisiones correctas. Estoy en el proceso de querer tra- cambiar de trabajos también. Necesito tiempo para hacer eso. No puedo estar uh, involucrado en haciendo una cosa y queriendo hacer otra a la vez. Uh-huh. Porque como que mi cerebro no trabaja de esa manera. O sea, me, me mete un poquito más presión. Uh-huh. Lamento mucho que me tengo que ir. Y ustedes saben que esto ha sido un proceso para mí uh, increíble. Creo que me ha enseñado mucho. A, a desenvolverme en frente de una cámara, en frente de personas. O sea, me ha dado mucha sabiduría a, entrevistando a, a todas las diferentes este, personas que hemos tenido aquí en el, en el podcast. Me ha dado una di- perspectiva completamente de las personas, de cómo son uh, personalmente, de, 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 de las cosas que les encantan hacer. O sea, es un... Es un es un, es un mundo que no lo conocía y, y gracias al podcast lo, lo conocí en realidad. Mm. Y Richie, te agradezco mucho porque uh, confiaste en mí para empezar el podcast, para empezar esto. Me acuerdo, me acuerdo como si fuera ayer que me dijiste, hey, güey, vamos a hacer este podcast, cabrón. ¿Qué onda? ¿Le entras? Sí, güey, mm. te dije y empezamos esto, esto. Metimos a Coque, vino Coque y, y hombre increíble, todo, todo el talento que Coque ha, ha traído al podcast, haciendo outlines, haciendo preguntas este, muy, muy coherentes, muy, muy difíciles para nuestros, este, uh, <risa> entre, a los que estamos entrevistando. O sea, es, 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 estos, estos chavos saben lo que están haciendo. Yo sé que, que si me voy, no los estoy dejando cortos, al contrario, a lo mejor van a saltar, van a hacer algo extra extra más de lo que de lo de conmigo estando acá deteniéndolos simplemente porque yo no tengo el tiempo yo no tengo la mentalidad y no tengo las ganas por decirlo así en hacerlo y, 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 y esa es de la, las razones porque porque me estoy yendo del podcast me encantó hacerlo lo disfruté muchísimo me encantó como lo dije antes conocer a estas nuevas porque me dio la oportunidad de conocer a a muchísima gente que, que en mi vida pensé que iba a saludar, que iba a hacerle una pregunta, que, que iba a tener un like en mi, en mi Instagram, por ejemplo, por esta persona que ni conocía. Yo creo que el, el podcast me dio todo eso y, y lo tomo así con mucho amor y mucho cariño y mucho agradecimiento hacia ustedes dos. ¿Qué sientes tú que fue algo que aprendiste aparte de la experiencia? ¿Qué dices? ¿Sabes qué? Nunca, como que nunca me imaginé que, que iba a poder hacer algo. Sí, bueno, eh, aquí tenemos mucho, mucho equipo. Ustedes básicamente nada más nos ven a nosotros y ven que ya estamos con los micrófonos aquí apuestos, con, el, con la computadora y todo, pero, pero esto lleva trabajo. Hay un outline que estos dos cabrones se lo, se lo echan en un rato y, y lo arman, ¿me entiendes? Y todo ese procedimiento de estar organizado y venir aquí temprano y armar todo esto, conectar los cables, organizar toda la cámara para que esté perfectamente, para que los que nos están viendo lo disfruten. Yo creo que toda esa organización es lo que he tomado yo de esto, porque nunca, nunca me imaginé venir a conectar yo un, un, un micrófono a un broadcaster o, o estarme viendo en la cámara cuando estoy hablando ahorita, por ejemplo, que no sea mi teléfono, nunca pensé pensé hacerlo así y eso, mm. eso también es algo que aprendí aquí haciéndolo, porque por el podcast, básicamente. David, uh, I have to tell you, man, uh, it, it, I do, 
I am saddened at your at your decision to to depart to go to go off, but I also understand what it feels like to um to wish to have a better balance in your life. Um, it's something that we all struggle with, you know. Um, it's something that when you do something creative and something uh, different, that on top of having a full time job, it's it's a sacrifice, and it's tough. What, what you end up sacrificing is time with your with your loved ones. And um, no, I completely respect your decision, man. And I just want to say that from the bottom of my heart, man, um, I love you, man. And uh, I got I've gotten to know you a lot through this through this adventure. And even before I joined, just listening to episodes with with uh, Richie and, and, and with yourself have allowed me to get to know you better, know your background. You know, before you were just someone I played soccer with, and uh, I know that we had uh, February birthdays. Yes. And, uh, <laughs> yes, we, we do. <laughs> and Super we like, Bowl. <laughs> and similar, maybe similar backgrounds, yes. but, but at the same time, that's just surface level. But through interviews and through the behind the scenes um you get to really know a person and and what i've learned from you man has been um how to express yourself in a in an honest way in a way that uh you don't hold your your feelings inside and i think it's something that we can all learn from mm -hmm. um because no matter where we are this podcast outside the podcast in the soccer field if you feel something you say it and then we're still you, you 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 act on it you don't hold it in and if it doesn't feel right you pull yourself out of it because you know that it's not worth it so you're someone that has the true values of of a human being of who you are and what you know you, you absolutely know it and you act on it so that's something i really admire from you and i really learn from you and um, i'm saddened that you're leaving but um, I know that you're going to continue to support us in Hell other yeah. ways. Hell yeah. And, and, and uh, man, dude, I love you, man. I love you, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think for, for me, as you know, like, uh, from the beginning, I always wanted to create this with friends. Uh, I didn't want to do it with people that I didn't know. I, I can go out there and, you know, and, and try to find. I, I constantly see, like, in groups of creatives or podcasts, you know, always someone looking for for another guest or someone there's always like this you know person hey what should i do what should i do and we already had an idea so it made it easier for 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 me knowing that anything any ideas i bring to the table like that beat will be on it you know and every time that i you know you didn't agree we're obviously let me know like hey wait no mames como que siento que como que esto no and that's part of the process um i never take anything you know like personal um but the one thing that I, that I learned is, you know, like how we got to to know each other. Like, like yes. I got to know you first in a different aspect uh, outside of the field or outside, you know, drinking beer and a carne asada <laughs> or, or something. Uh, we got to know, uh, like, we got to know, like, more about each other. Like, a lot of the things that you would say here, it's, it's like I didn't know about. So, and a lot of the stuff, maybe even like our friends didn't know, like they got to listen through here yeah. from you. So that was pretty good. And it's just the, the like what I got is like for me, like every time I would have something going on or an idea in my mind, like for me is always like, hey, wait, what do you think of this? And, and you were always welcoming to, to, hey, wait, let's do it. I think that helped me push. So I, I feel like, like you're leaving and, and you know, like I'm going to be sad about it, but I'm out, I'm out of state with that, like that beat. Like every time I think of you know if I want to do something like that, we will have my back. Uh, so that that's what I, I I appreciate and always. And you also got to learn on on the way because like you said like yeah. you didn't like when you, in the first episode nunca habías hecho esto. I never thought like como te dije nunca pensé. Yeah, and, and being on the mic, I mean, it, it's at the end of the day like it's a conversations that we have with people. Sometimes you know, some some researches or, or or questions do take a little more time and everything just because of the detail for the nature of the conversation mm -hmm. but the fact that i got to see your point of view in a lot of aspects and how different it is to where you make me always think like i never thought about like that way mm -hmm. like i never thought about like you know i never thought about it like how you would like, ask a question because there's times that i felt like on like saying on a episode we will have the, our questions but then you will have like a completely different question that would change the tone 
and change it to another like level of of the conversation that we have with the with the guest. Mm -hmm. So which was good. Um, and I, I know we're gonna miss that that part. You know, like those those uh those questions that like oh, I didn't think about that. <laughs> but well, not, uh, now the one thing like I do you know like like you know like I commend you is just that uh, you know you're gonna do stuff for your for you. Yeah. And like Coke said, is is good to know when you you know you feel like you're not a hundred percent there. Mm -hmm. You know, you you it's also good to be true to yourself and just as Barcelona, for example, right. taking a step back. Yeah. yeah. Uh that's that's always good. Uh a lot of the times that takes humility and that takes you know, that takes a lot of courage to step back because as men we always want to feel like, nah, let's keep going at it. Let's keep going at right. it. Yeah. But yeah. I mean I mean the the least thing I want to do is like hold the podcast, you know, because I'm not doing my part and 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 that I know you guys can take it from here. Like there's no doubt in me that this is you guys, you know, this <laughs> is your shit now and and you got it. Uh and and that make that makes me feel good about it, you know, like oh yeah, I'm leaving and I'm not leaving an empty seat. I'm not leaving a hole in there, you know. Yeah. I know I know you guys can take care of this with your eyes closed. Um, yeah, and 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 by the way, um, the, uh, a estos chavos no los conozco nada más aquí por el podcast. O sea, hemos, nos conocemos ya por varios tiempos jugando fútbol, uh, haciendo carnitas, juntándonos para para ir a un bar. O sea, nos conocemos bien. Somos familia. Oh, muchos bares. Sí, sí. Nosotros no somos amigos, somos familia ya. Yeah. Ya, ya, ya. La amistad superó, superó todo. O sea que estamos ahí al 100 y como tú lo dijiste, no voy a dejar de, de no voy a dejar de apoyar al, al podcast porque me gusta, me gusta lo que están haciendo, me gusta mm -hmm. el trabajo que le ponen, el, el amor que le ponen, el, el, toda la sabiduría que ustedes tienen. O sea, me encanta todo eso y yo creo que ustedes van a ser un... un Van a hacer un trabajo tremendo y, y lo puedo ver. Uh -huh. Y este voy y voy a ser parte ahora como, como, como los demás, escuchándolos, apoyándolos en lo que pueda. Si en algo puedo ayudar para no incluirme mucho, lo voy a hacer. Ya saben que siempre estoy ahí, siempre estoy en el teléfono. Uh -huh. uh, tenemos, nos vamos a estar juntando. Es como si básicamente ya no nos vamos a ver eso. Los miércoles. Eso es, <risa> eso es, eso es este... Eso no lo podemos parar, siempre nos tenemos que ver porque nos hacemos falta, ya saben, el cariñito y todo, nos tenemos sí, que dar. Agarrar, no sé. <risa> agarrar, no sé, pero. <risa> Off the record. <risa> ¿Qué no te, Mónica? <risa> sí. No, pero este. Eso sí, le quiero agradecer. Muchas gracias por, por darme la oportunidad, por, por hacerme sentir especial en los momentos que a lo mejor no estaba haciendo lo mejor de mí mismo y este. Básicamente, eso es uno de los puntos por qué me estoy yendo del podcast, porque necesito trabajar en mí, necesito trabajar en, en, en cosas que me, que me tienen que ayudar a ser mejor persona para mí. Y, y yo creo que dejando el podcast me va a dar ese tiempo, me va a dar esa, ese, ese momento de, de pensar, ese momento de, de hacer lo debido. Y, 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 y por eso estoy, por eso estoy dejando el podcast. No me han corrido estos chavos, como les digo. <risa> son, son, son cabrón de los güeyes, pero. <risa> pero no, 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 nada de eso. Este. No, y muchas gracias a, todo, a todos los que entrevisté, a todos los que uh, me conocieron aquí por el podcast. Muchas gracias. Este, muchas gracias por so tomarse el tiempo y venir al podcast. Sigan apoyándolos. Sigan este, haciendo lo que pueden para traer nuevas, nuevas aquí, nuevas este, personas, porque es lo que necesita el podcast. Mm -hmm. Y este, vamos a seguir apoyándolos como quiera. Hell yeah. Last thing, David, last thing I want to say, man, is <clears throat> I think you, you, right now you're, you know, you're announcing your departure. You're starting a new, you're turning a new chapter. And maybe you, you feel a certain way, maybe not the best. But I think you should be absolutely proud of everything that you've done. Um, I think as individuals, we're very hard on ourselves. Yeah. We, we, we don't think we're good enough. Um, we don't think we've done enough. There's always that feeling that you could do more. But I want I wanted to say that each of us came to this and we've given what we can. But I think when you look back at all the episodes you've done, all the interviews and all the people that you've met and your contributions, you should be extremely proud, bro. Um, 
And those skills that you gain, you're going to be able to take them to your next your next challenge. And uh, I wish you the best of luck, man. And hearing that you know you're going you're, you're trying you're going to different avenues of work, you know, different different opportunities, man. I know that you're going to kill it in everything you do because of what you've shown us here, man. So cheers to you, man. Sal- suerte. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Salud. Echale ganas. And I know, I know you're going to do well. You're going to continue to do well. We're going to miss you for sure. Yeah. Um, and if you ever want to come, hop in the mic. Yeah. Every recurring time, <laughs> you're more than welcome to. If Thank you're you. bored on a, on a just Wednesday, come just come through. Thank the, you. Thank the you, door man. is always going to be open and your seat is always going to be there. Thank and you. And the mic you. and the same height and everything. And this is, and this is why I love this motherfuckers right here like <laughs> this is exactly why because that's how they are for sure for sure man. but now thank you man thank you for you know i know like you said like for me like you leaving it's 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 tough um but don't ever think like you were holding us back like no you actually there's there's a lot of things that i don't think about and you came through and helped out so never think about that and yeah man like whatever you you've learned even if you learn anything just you know like apply it um because I know anyone asks you, do you know how to talk? <laughs> <laughs> you have 41 episodes behind you. so A little bit. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit. So, um, but yeah, man. Uh, and, and without any further ado, we know we're saying goodbye to David. Not forever, but just for, you know. It's a, it's a, until next time. Until, until next time. time. <laughs> there you go. Yes. Let's leave it, like, let, let's leave it at, at that. There you go. And, uh, you know, thank you for listening to Otra Por Favor. This is episode 41. Hope you guys enjoy it. Ahí se portan bien. Y si no invitan, se cuidan. Nos vemos pronto y adiós. Chao, chao, chao. Esto es otra, por favor. This is one more.